Hi, I'm Rabbi Mark Klein, Mammoth Reform Temple. This is Shabbat Shalom with a heart healthy dose of Torah. We're in the midst of Passover right now, and so we go outside the normal Torah cycle to reread the story of the Exodus. And so we're gonna, we've, we've been in Leviticus, we're going back into Exodus, and um, when we reread the text, we're supposed to see it with, with new eyes. When we read it in the cycle, as it normally reads, we miss so much. You know, there's the ongoing saga of the people of Israel. But now we go back to this specific story. And through the holiday of Passover, we remind ourselves that the story really isn't about having been slaves in Egypt. And it's not about the, the ancient Egyptians who uh, were taskmasters. This is a story that we read every year. We begin the Seder by saying, we were slaves in the land of Egypt, not our ancestors but we were slaves. And we're reminded that we have a lot of work to do. And so Israel and Egypt, as it plays out in the Passover story, has nothing to do with the geography of the biblical area or even really modern day time. Israel, the word means one who wrestles with God. It comes from the Jacob story. His name is changed. He wrestles with God. And Egypt is uh, symbolic of the oppressive behaviors that we still impose upon each other. And so we have to move ourselves from a place of oppression in Egypt to a place where we can be fully people of faith, people who wrestle with God in freedom and in search of each other's freedom. So there's a piece of our liturgy that reminds us of this, this modern day importance of the term. It's written, it's a poem that was written by uh, a man that we actually include in our prayer book. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there's a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to the promise passes through the wilderness, and that there's no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. So tradition tells us that the world only changes if we take care of each other. If we get past our obsession with needing to be superior with our egos, our arrogances, and our bigotries, our prejudices, to be able to see each other as human beings, everyone in need. And so Passover calls on us to do a better job taking care of each other with whom we share the world and the world itself that we all uh, depend upon. And so, if Passover is to have any value, then the Seder meal that begins with bondage and ends with the words, Bashanah Ba'ab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem, has to mean that this, that this table that I'm sitting at this year is my Yerushalayim, my Jerusalem, my vision of wholeness, my vision of peace. And if I don't do the work this year, then it's not going to come true. So I hope that as the holiday passes, that we do a better job getting past the me and thinking about the we. And only if we can do that can the world be a better place. So let's make sure the holiday is meaningful. Join us please tonight, seven o'clock for Shabbat services, as we'll also do the Yiz Kor service, the memorial service for people in our families who have passed away over the years uh, gone by. And um, we'll celebrate and push each other to a better tomorrow. Shabbat Shalom.